Okay, so we're going to get started with exercise 217. Uh, the two things that we're doing today in 217 directly relate to the assignment 203. There are two, two pieces of assignment 203 that you're going to have to do. Um, the first part is, a, is about unrolling surfaces and learning to unroll surfaces. The second part is about making a file that's ready to go 3D print. And so with the 3D printing, it's still a little bit of an experiment. We're still trying to sort it all out. Uh, though this semester it is required that you give me the OBJ or the STL file ready to 3D print. So I'll be checking that off as part of your assignment 203. Um, whether it works or not remains to be seen uh, and or whether you end up with a 3D print. I don't know. We're working through that part of it. Um, so anyway, we're going to go through those two, two pieces today. When I start talking about unrolling surfaces, the idea is on an unrolling surface that all of these shapes, or a lot of these shapes that we've been creating, if, if we took them over, if we unrolled them and took them over to the laser cutter, we'd be able to basically cut out the pieces, even if they curve, and glue them together to make the shapes. So I have a variety of examples here. Some are better than others. Uh, all of these were cut on the laser cutters here. This was back when I required that you actually make this model. You guys won't have to make the physical model. You just have to show me that you can make the pieces that would make the physical model. Um, but these are all flat pieces, and they've been glued together to form the curves that you've created. So assuming that your surfaces are developable, or in other words, unrollable, we should be able to create the, the pieces that you need to create these kinds of objects. So anyway, I have them, so you guys are welcome to, to pass them around. The, the small one there has a tear in it, uh, but that one is just made out of paper. It was just a paper with the little tabs glued together, uh, as an example. So um, they got, it got crushed along the way. So what I'm going to do this time is instead of opening that um, site file that has the, the primary renderings in it, I'm going back to just my skyscraper file, which is right here. Um, with this skyscraper file, I still have it in the rendered view. We're not dealing with rendering today, so I can actually switch out of the rendered view, and I'm going to go back to just the shaded view to see my, my drawing uh, or my model here. And at this point, it's not a bad idea to do a Save As. So I'm going to go to File and then Save As for what I'm doing today, and I'll put it into today's folder, which is 217. Uh, <coughs> And I'll go ahead and save it. So with the unroll um, surfaces, the more you clean up your model and you get it ready to unroll, the easier it's going to be to unroll. The other thing that I'd like to remind you of is if you find that your model isn't unrollable, you can simplify your model. You can rebuild it, simplify it, take some of the curvature out, and unroll that. It's still acceptable to turn in the uh, very twisty one as you're rendering, and then have a simplified one that, that is unrolled and or 3D printed. So don't be afraid to uh, modify it if it's necessary. So in this particular case, I have my building here that has its twists on it. And when I start looking at the skin, I'm going to turn everything off except for the skin layer for a second. And when I start looking at that skin layer, I want this in an ideal world to be a joined poly surface. So if you have, for example, individual pieces like this, you'll want to go through and try to join them together. So you'll click on them, type join, and eventually, as you work your way around this particular shape, you should be able to join them together. This will help with the unroll process. So the more joined it is, the better. The other thing is, I believe that I have a roof here, right there, that really should be on the skin layer. So I'm going to go ahead and change that object to the skin layer. It's probably going to mess up my um, materials. But again, I did a save as, so the fact that it messed up my materials doesn't <laughs> matter uh, anymore. So let me make sure that that and the top floor there are joined together. And so now I have this continuous closed poly surface <coughs> that I believe also includes the bottom. I have two surfaces on the bottom. Take this one plus that one 
and we'll join that together. So now that all of that's joined, I can take this and I can perform an unroll surface command on it. Uh, this, by the way, is written out in 5.22, the unroll surface command. So you guys can reference that if you need to and go back through it. But essentially, all we need to do is select this object itself and then enter the unroll surface command. You need anything? I need to learn how to do that in AutoCAD. Yeah, too bad. You should learn Rhino. <laughs> it won't do it. Nor will it. It's one on both things. Oh. We, we, so this is a great part. We did a tent. We uh -huh. tents. Mm -hmm. And the problem was we could make them all 3D, but then trying to figure out how to, how it unfolds. How it unfolds and where the seams go. So anyway, unroll surface. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to surface, and we're going to go to, um, sorry, I always forget where it is. I always type it. <laughs> uh, unroll developable, right? Well done. Thank you. Unroll developable surface, OK? Or you could just type unroll SRF. And when we do that, it's going to say, Select curves on poly surface to unroll. Well, I'll get to that. I'm not going to do that initially. And then we have some options. Explode, yes or no. Labels, yes or no. And keep properties, yes or no. So we don't care so much about the properties because we're not worrying about materials right now anyway. So we can leave that set to no. Labels, unless you're really good, you should turn your labels on because you need to know what lines up to what. So we're going to say labels, yes. So labels are set to yes. So the next piece is a little bit more complicated, and that is explode yes or no. If we had just a, like a cube and we unrolled it, we might say explode no, and it would unroll such that the sides that were joined together would stay joined together. For something this complicated, we're going to have to explode it and reassemble it ourselves, uh, because otherwise there would be overlaps during the explode. So we'll go ahead and leave that at explode yes. I'm not going to worry about the curves. We'll come back to that in a little bit. And at this point, I'll go ahead and hit Enter. And what Rhino does is it takes these twisting surfaces and twists them out to be flat on the ground level. And it gives us all the component pieces here that make up this building. So I have them all. That's good. Now I need to go through and figure out how they fit back together, because it doesn't keep them in order. So I have two things. I have my pieces, which I'll go ahead and move away here a little bit. And I have my tower, which has all the numbers on it for reference. So it's labeled the tower, and it's labeled all the pieces. For the most part, you can work primarily with just the pieces. I'm going to switch over into the top view, maybe. Let me select one of these, and zoom selected. There we go. Sometimes it helps to just look straight down at this. So I'm going to look for pieces that match up. So for example, 15 and 15 would match up. So I could take this 15, I can move it to be at the end of that 15. I could rotate it. to Match up. And shockingly enough, this edge here matches perfectly with piece 15. Now I could say, OK, well, 18, there's 18, and there's 18. Let me move this piece, and then I'll rotate it. And there's 18. So those two 18s match up. OK, so now I have 21, and I have 23. Well, 21 might work. So we'll put 21 right there and rotate it. Oops, I didn't quite get it all the way on. You have to make sure you're accurate on these moves. There we go. And we'll rotate from there around to match up to that edge. OK, so that's not bad. But 23, I couldn't put. 23 on 23 because the two pieces would overlap. I'd never be able to cut them out. So that's a problem. So that's, we, we can't put those two together yet. I could probably take 12. We'll try. And I'll put 12 where 12 goes. So there, we'll rotate. And I can try to put it there. Nope. I've got it 
a problem where those two intersect. So depending, I might have to decide, uh, you know what, this one's not in the right place. Maybe I could put 23 in there instead, and we'll deal with this piece in just a second. So we'll move this. And every once in a while, they just don't fit, in which case you have to, you have to cut a separate piece. And, and when you go to glue it in, you'll have to glue it into place. So there's that piece. They don't overlap. So that one, that layout works. Uh, let's see here. Let's take 9 and move 9 over. There's 9. Oh, 9 overlaps there. That's a problem. So that's no good. So we'll move that one out for a second. Let's try 6 and see if 6 will work for us. I'm guessing no. Nope, 6 isn't going to work either. Well, 3 will work, so we can stick 3 on. And we'll rotate. So we're starting to get there. So you can see that we'd start with this piece, and all these other pieces would fold down from it. OK, well, we've got these, these other pieces that aren't quite matching up yet. Well, let's try from the bottom. So we've got 13 here. Let's move 13 to match up with 13. There we go. And let's see. We've got 21. Let's see if we can get 21 here. <coughs> I don't see 21. Oh, it's 19, sorry. There we go. Those two are really close, but they're close enough in the model form that we'll survive. So that's there. Now we've got piece four. We can probably use piece four here. Same thing, it's awfully close to those two pieces, but I think we'll be OK now they come together. And so our last piece is piece 9 and piece 7. So this is the one where it's kind of a sticky piece, because it didn't work as piece 9, because it intersected my object, and it doesn't really work here. One or the other of these, they'd end up overlapping. So I could put piece 9 down here. Sorry, it would be piece 7. like that, that would be fine. But I'm still kind of stuck with this, this piece here. So in this case, I'm going to have to just do this as a separate piece, because there's no way for me to join it up with any of the other uh, pieces. It would be really convenient if it worked uh, on piece 6 right there, and I could glue it in there. Depends on your building shape and, and whether, whether or not it will work. So for right now, I'm just going to leave it over here on the side. So I have this all laid out so that I have my shape. Now I need to prepare this file as if I was going to go laser cut it. So I'm going to create a new layer. Oops, let me make it outside of all the rest of the layers there. And I'll call that layer laser cut. And I'll make a sublayer for cut and another sublayer for engrave. So I need to start establishing where my cut lines and where my engrave lines are. My cut lines would be red. And my engrave lines would be blue. I'll go ahead and make the engrave layer active. And I'm going to use a command called duplicate edge. So I'll go to curve, curve from objects, duplicate edge. Or you could type in dupe edge. And when I do that, I'm going to walk my way around all of these surfaces. So I'll pick my surface edges like that. I'm going to pick these joints, too, as I go around. The other option would be to use the dupe border command, which is fine. The problem is we'd have some overlapping um, curves at the joints. So you'd have double, double curves that you'd have to get rid of. So I'm going to work away my way around my objects. All right, and 
I do need this one last one here. Okay, so I've got all my pieces outlined. When I hit enter, it will create lines that are on the engraved layer. So at this point, I could actually turn off my skyscraper layer altogether, and I'd be left with just the pieces that I'm going to need. Obviously, I need to start cutting these pieces out. So far, everything's on the engraved layer. If I were to cut these two out, let's look at these two pieces, for example. This edge here is going to match up with that edge right there. But unless I'm doing it out of some kind of thick cardboard or something, I don't have anything to glue to. So I really need, in the paper model, that's the best example, I need a little tab that I can fold and then glue to make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to offset one or the other of these curves. And my distance is an arbitrary value. So I might say, you know, I want to offset about like that. That seems long enough to be my tab. I don't know how far it is. It's 213 inches, whatever. It doesn't matter. I just need a little bit. So when it glues together, it's an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch, something like that. I can then offset this side here. I'm not going to offset this side, because one side has to have a tab, the other side doesn't. So this piece there would end up being a cut piece. So I'd cut that piece out. I could offset once again there. I could offset there. And these two pieces would end up being on the cut layer. I should probably just change my current layer to be the cut layer as I start to create these. I need to connect from these corners out to my tabs. And I'm just using lines to cut those out. So these two pieces are going to glue to there, and it's going to glue to there, so I don't have to worry about those two. This piece here glues to, I think it's this one of these two pieces. So let's just do the tabs on this piece and not worry about that piece. So I'll go ahead and do my offset. around this piece. Remember, of course, if you, if you end up cutting it out and you have a tab that you don't need, you can always just slice off that extra tab. So I have those pieces ready. And if you need to, you can always turn back on the pieces to remember, uh, OK, that's piece 20. And where's side 20? Oh, it's that side there. So sometimes I might have been wrong. So in that case, side 20, this side over here would need to offset. So I'll select that one, and we'll offset that one out to that side. So you kind of have to work your way around. So side 20 now has a glue. Side 17, that also needs one. So we'll put one down here. There's side 17. Side 14, it's either this side or that side. Doesn't matter which one. We'll go ahead and do it to this side. Side 10 glues up with side 10, so I don't need one there. Side 16 glues up with this side 16, so we'll do it from right here. So I'm basically working my way around to create these little tabs. Um, either, either of these needs to create a tab, so we'll do side 8 there. 9, we'll do the end. Let's see, we already have a tab for 6. We already have a tab for 1. Um, 5 has a tab. 4 has a tab, that's good. Zero needs a tab. Ten, did we already have a tab for ten? Yep, we have a tab for ten. We're good. OK, so I think at this point, 22, 22 needs a tab at the end. OK, so I think at this point, we've basically gotten all the tabs that we need. So I'm going to turn back off my skyscraper layer with all my labels on it. And now I have to start thinking of this as if it were being cut out. So I'll touch up the little tabs that aren't at the end. I'm 
like that, like that. This tab intersects the base, so we're going to do a trim to get rid of that part of the tab. We're going to miss a little bit of the tab, not the end of the world. There's another one that needs a little trim. And a couple more pieces there and there. But if I start to think about this as being cut out, obviously this piece needs to change from an engrave to a cut because it's on the outside edge. So I'm going to work my way around now and make sure that the pieces are actually being cut out. So those two would be cuts. That would be a cut. That would be a cut. That piece there would be a cut. That piece would be a cut. That piece would be a cut. This and this would be cuts. That would be cuts. I worked my way around there. That would be a cut. That piece would be a cut. That would be a cut there. All right, so all of those need to change onto the cut layer. So I'll change object layer. So now this, these pieces are ready to go over to the laser cutter and be cut out. I have them all established. I have the tabs. And I could go um, and have this cut out and ultimately glue it all together, and it would make my object. So I've worked my way through. This is what you need to show me as the first part. This is part one. So you can just do a screen capture, that's fine, of this file. If you were going to go laser cut it, obviously you would select it, and you go to File, Export Selected. Oops, that was not what I meant. Export Selected, and you choose to make this an AutoCAD file. And it, you can do the 2004 polylines, that's fine. And you'd say Save. You'd have to scale it down appropriately and that sort of thing as well, because obviously it's big right now. Okay, But for our purposes today, you just have to show me a screenshot of these red and blue lines that you created it. In terms of your assignment, this is also what you're going to show me. The difference is you're going to show me this as your um, featured image on the post, but you're also going to give me a DWG file as if you were going to cut it. So I need you to export the selected. There are two different posts, one's for the assignment, one's for today's exercise. I'm just trying to make sure I'm clear. Yeah. You could cut it out of like a Bristol paper. That's all it would take. And um, some of the ones that I passed around like these, like this one here, I think is a two-ply museum board. It doesn't have the tabs on it. She glued the edges together when she created it. It's a little bit thicker, a little bit more rigid. Um, in this circumstance, you probably wouldn't need the tabs if you were careful with how you glued it. It depends a little on the complexity. Uh, if you did it out of a thick paper, like a Bristol or something, though, the tabs work really well. The more you're building twists, so something like this where it's twisting, the harder it is to get thicker paper to glue because it just doesn't want to twist. Um, if you use a thinner paper like the, like the one that I passed around or a Bristol and you fold the tabs first, as you glue it together, you kind of glue it and twist it at the same time and hold it till it dries and it'll stay with the correct turn to it. Um, so I like like a Bristol or a watercolor. To me, that's the happy medium uh, of being able to actually cut it out. Also, uh, are there balconies? Ignore the balconies. You will, you you know, it, yeah. No, you're not going to do it. So just do the skin of the building. Okay. So that's creating this. I told you also that I'd revisit the idea of unrolling curves with the the, the surface. Um, I didn't do it for the piece, but I want to show this to you just so you're aware. On some of the, the pieces that I passed around, this one is a good example. The, the little tiny tower that's made out of paper. Uh, there's a bunch of engraved lines that represent where the floors would be that go around it. You can do that with the, with the unroll command as well. And so let me just show it to you. I'm not going to go through and make it you know, tabs so that you could uh, glue it together, but I'll show you the process at least. So in this particular example, let me, um, I'm going to get rid of the numbers on this, and let me move all of these away. 
so we can concentrate on the building here. So I have all of my floors still in my building. I could select all of those floors by going to my floors layer. I could say select objects and I get all the floors. I could then take the skin of the building. I'll hold down shift and select the skin and I could type intersect. But before I do that, it would be helpful if I had a, a set of uh, just a layer, a temporary layer to put all these resulting pieces on. So let's make that, I can just leave it called layer one for right now. And I'm going to type intersect. And what that does is it creates a curve that goes around every one of those floor plates. If I turned everything else off, you'd see that I just have a series of curves. That's it, they go around each floor plate. I can take those curves along with the skin during the unroll. So I'll do unroll surface, unroll SRF, select surface to unroll, there's my skin. Select curves on the surface to unroll, here's where I'm gonna select all of those curves. Now when I hit enter and it creates my unrolled surface, on top of each one of these surfaces, is all of the floor plates as curves. So I could take all of those curves and make them engrave lines and they'd go across my surfaces and I'd know where all the floors are, if you wanted to do it. So it's an extra layer of detail, but I at least like to point out that you can unroll curves along with the surface. So if you have a, a curve that's coplanar with the surface, it can be unrolled with it, okay? And it, so you can look at some of these examples. You can see the faint lines that represent the floors. Obviously, this is a much bigger uh, building. Those faint lines are what I'm talking about. They just give it a little bit of scale. Okay. Um, if you had window divisions, if you had vertical window divisions as curves, you could do the same thing. You put those on the building. Um, so it's just something to be aware of. In terms of what I'm looking for, though, all I need is the red and blue lines. You don't have to have the floors. That's, that's an optional piece. So that was part one. That was unrolling surfaces in Rhino. The second part is preparing your file to be 3D printed. And so this is the other kind of half of what I'm, I'm trying to teach you guys. I think it's really important for you guys going forward to be able to model in Rhino and then get rapid prototypes out, whether that's building these kinds of things with unrolled surfaces or whether it's creating a 3D print and sending it to the 3D printer and being able to see your object or your building. And so in order to do that, we have to work through uh, some intricacies, obviously, uh, to be able to create our, our building uh, as a 3D print. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me turn off, I don't need layer one anymore. Actually, I'll tell you what, let me create a new, just a new layer and I'm going to call it 3D print so that I can make it my active layer. I'm going to turn off the laser cut files there. I'm going to turn off everything but the skin of the building. So you could choose to keep the core if you want. That, that would be optional. Uh, let me, I'll keep it. So the building core should be on, the skin should be on, and that should be it. Yeah, the building core is right in there. So I have those two pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and select them. So I have the core and the skin, and I'll go to File and then Export Selected. And I'm gonna create a brand new Rhino file. So I'm exporting it to its own kind of file. I'm not going to an object file or anything yet, just to a Rhino file. I'll put it into uh, today's folder. And this is, we'll call this Skyscraper. 3D print 2018. Okay, so now it's its own file, so I'm not gonna worry about destroying anything. I can also, at this point, change these two objects onto the 3D print layer. Oh wait, let me open it, sorry. I thought it opened by default. Uh, sure, save that. There's the 3D print, perfect. Good. So it got rid of the other layers that I don't need. That's good. Otherwise, you should go through and delete those layers. So 3D printing has a couple uh, challenges to it. Number one, most of the time, 
And there'll be a lot of these, most of the time, kind of like this, because 3D printing is not an exact science. Sometimes it plays nice and 3D prints really easily. Sometimes it plays really mean and doesn't want to print your file at all. It's the nature of, of the beast. So to, to make your 3D prints more successful, I'm going to give you a bunch of suggestions. So first off, this shape is already a nice closed poly surface. So that's a good thing. But not everybody's shape will be like that when you first start. So I'm going to go ahead and explode this for right now so that you can see what it looks like when it's not so good. So I have my object here. The first thing that I want to do is I want to make it what's called a watertight object. I want it to be so that it's completely sealed from the outside. As if I filled it with water, the water wouldn't pour out. So to be able to see that, we're going to look for a specific type of edge condition, which is called a naked edge. So in order to see that, I'll type the command show edges. It's going to ask me to select the surfaces or poly surfaces for edge display. We could type all here. And when I hit enter, it's going to give me this little edge analysis window. And it's going to pop up. And so I have some options. I can show all edges. I can show naked edges. Or I can show non-manifold edges. We're going to show naked edges. And it gives me the option to show what the edge color would be, in which case it's purple, or kind of a pinkish purple. So in this case, I have lots of naked edges. It's not a watertight object. The water could leak out if it was inside this object. However, if I start to take these pieces and, for example, join them together, you'll see that that front edge that used to be purple is now not purple. So it's not a naked edge. It's now watertight at that seam. So if I work my way around my object, and I say this plus this plus this, and I join, oops, helps if you type join correctly, you can see that I'm slowly getting rid of those purple lines. So I'll continue working my way around. Okay, so all of those are sealed. If I took this to that, join, that's now sealed. The only thing left is the bottom here, join, oops, helps if you join it to something, there we go. Those are all sealed. So that's pretty good. The core that's inside here, if I turn the skin layer off, is joined around here, but it has naked edges on the top and the bottom. So I need to create a surface there. We can do a surface from three or four corner points or a rectangular plane either way. So there's my surface. Now I can take this plus this and join. That becomes a joined object. Same thing at the bottom here. This plus this, join, and there we go. So one more, one more time, I'm going to um, go back to my show edges, select surfaces, all, enter. I want to make sure that naked edges is selected, and I'm not seeing any naked edges. That's a good sign. So I'm happy. This now is ready to, to begin the 3D printing process. So I don't have any of those naked edges. So that's the first piece. The next piece that we need to do is we need to scale this object down in size. So I suggested that your model be 808 feet tall for your assignment. If you do the math, a 3 quarter inch scale of that means that it's going to be 6.06 .06 inches tall. You can do the math, but I'm telling you that. If your building was 600 feet tall, it would be 4 and a half inches tall. So if it's not one of those two sizes, you need to do a little bit of math. Okay, I'm suggesting a scale of 100 feet equals 3 quarters of an inch. Technically speaking, the 3D printers that we have here can print anything up to 12 inches by 12 inches by 12 inches. The problem there is the, the bigger the file, the longer it's going to take to print. So we want the happy medium. Small enough object to get what we want, it's not going to take quite as long to print. That being said, one of these objects is going to take somewhere between 2 and 4 hours to print. That's a normal print time on, on this size object. So uh, just be aware. I'm trying to bracket this a little bit for you. So we need to scale this object down. 
So I have the pieces of my building put together. Um, I could, if I wanted to, add a little like an elevator uh, roof deck. So we could say maybe we'll go up 10 more feet on top. That is still going to be, because it's an enclosed object, it's still uh, a solid. So it's not going to affect the, the, the naked edges. So if I went back and went to show edges all and I looked at naked edges, it's still not a naked edge, so we're OK. It's still watertight. OK, so now that I have all this ready, it's time to scale this thing down. First thing is the height. So I'm going to do a regular scale, not a scale 1D, not a scale 2D. And I need to scale down the height of this particular object. So I'm going to start at one of these corners, and I'm going to go up. Now the problem is my building doesn't have, it's not straight there anymore because it's twisting. So I might need to do this in the side view and try to work my way up to the top of the building that way. The other thing that may be useful is to go ahead and create a line to work from. So I might start at this lower corner and work my way up to a perpendicular line. to give myself some, some guidelines of, of how I'm trying to scale this. OK, so now we'll go back. We'll scale. I'll start at that lower edge. I'll work my way up to this upper edge. There it is. My new size of that line, because my model is 808 feet tall, should be 6.06 .06 inches. And I'll go ahead and hit Enter. Obviously, it gets really, really tiny. So let me zoom select it on it. There it is. Let's move it over to the origin. So I'll go to move, and we'll say 0, 0, 0. Once again, zoom selected. There it is, right at the origin. So this now is down to the size that I need to 3D print. It's still not quite ready to print. The 3D printer is looking for uh, a, a polygon mesh, essentially, to print. So it's looking for a file that would come out of like SketchUp, for example, not a nice, perfectly smooth curve coming out of Rhino. It's unfortunate, but it's what the 3D printers are looking for. So when we go to, to, to make this, we actually have to convert it over into that kind of an object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select right here all of my objects. Oh, wait, did I not? OK, we're going to change the units later, so that's fine. Um, I'm going to select all of my object, and I'm going to type the mesh command. And so what this allows me to do is it allows me to choose the number of polygons that make up this particular mesh. And so right now it's set in the middle. You can hit preview to see how it's going to break up your object into what kinds of triangles it's going to break up your object in. The more polygons you choose when you hit preview, the denser this is going to be, and the more accurately it's going to represent your actual shape. The fewer polygons that you choose, the less accurate it's going to be in representing your shape. So safe to be in about the middle. If you want to bump it over a little bit to the more polygon side, that's OK. And when you click OK, you'll have two objects. You'll have your poly surface, which was my original surface, and you'll have your mesh which is the file that we're actually going to 3D print. So I'd like to separate the two so they're not right on top of each other. And I'll do an SEL mesh. So select mess, mesh, SEL mesh. That gives me all of the mesh objects. I can then move them over a little bit. And we can see the two side by side. So it's similar. It just made up slightly differently for the 3D print. So it's pretty close. This is the object I'm going to 3D print. This is my original uh, poly surface. So let's take these objects. Let's put them on the 3D print layer, if they're not already. And then let's turn off the rest. Let's turn off the skyscraper. Put these over here. There we go. So now I'm left with just this mesh object, this, just these mesh objects. That's what I'm going to be 3D printing. So at this point, we need to scale this 
out of being in, or we need to change the units from being in inches to being in millimeters because the 3D printers like millimeters, not inches. So we're going to go into our units. I'm going to right click on the inches down here at the bottom. And I'm going to go to unit settings. And I'm going to switch my model units from inches to millimeters. When I do that and say OK, it's going to pop up saying, do you want to scale your model by 25.4? Yes, you do. So I'll go ahead and say yes. And we'll say OK. And there it is. We are in millimeters, and there is my building. I'm going to move this so that it's back over at 0, 0, um, or at least closer to it. There we go. And now it's time to export this uh, to something that the 3D printer can read. So there's two types of, of 3D files that the, the 3D printers can read, an OBJ file or an STL file. Rhino can produce both of them. Uh, I've referred to them interchangeably before. I don't really care which one you pick. Uh, in the handout today, I suggest an OBJ, so we'll go ahead and create that. What I will do at this point is I'll select my objects. There it is. I'll go to File and then Export Selected. And from the list down here as Save As Type, I'm going to choose a .obj. And I'll call this Skyscraper 2018. And I'll go ahead and save it. Right here, we want to keep it as a polygon mesh. The rest of these options are just fine. We'll go ahead and say OK. And it then creates our object file. So that object file is ready to print. It doesn't mean that I can walk over and print it. So it's ready, but I have to create something called G-code that tells the printer how to actually print it. And so that involves another piece of software that's not available in these labs. It's available only on the 3D printing machine over there. So all I'm asking you for uh, as part of your assignment 203, and obviously as part of today's exercise, is to create the OBJ file and post it. That's it. We'll talk about how to create the actual G code in Cura uh, a little bit later in the semester. I'll probably take some smaller groups of you guys over there <laughs> so that you can see the process. I will probably, in the interest of time, when I first come in uh, in the early morning, I'll probably set a group of four or five to print, and we'll let it print during the day, and hopefully it'll be done by the end of our class. So you probably won't do the physical printing of this, but you'll have the file ready for it. Uh, and again, it's still a little bit experimental because I haven't, I'm supposed to start teaching this in class and I haven't really worked out the kinks yet. Um, so that's where we are. For today, I want you to post that JPEG of your unrolled surface. That'll be your featured image. But I also want you to post an OBJ file so that you've gone through and made your watertight object and you've proven that you can do that. Remember, your assignment 203 is going to have separate posts. So different from your exercise, we're going to have separate posts. Uh, and I think for clarity, uh, and like I said, I'm still working out the kinks here, I think I want you to create three separate posts for your, uh, your assignment 203. So one post will be assignment 203 ob object file, OBJ. One post will be assignment 203 laser cut file. And then the last one will be the renderings. I'll update the site to say, that, to say that I want that. All of this stuff, like the laser cut file and the OBJ, is already on the sheet uh, or, or already online. I'm just trying to figure out what's the best way to organize it. If you give me one post with all that stuff in it, it's a little hard for me to, to get through all of it and make sure you have it. Um, the, in terms of your grades for the laser cut file and for the object file, those are like free points for you guys. You just have to do them. Uh, and then we'll grade the, the images. Does that make sense? So it's more of checking off that you have them than anything else. OK, so I'm going to turn you loose on those two things, um, and we'll go from there. I'm very close to having your grades for, for this. I apologize that I'm so far behind. Uh, I've got to finish a few more rounds of exercises to make sure that they're current, and then I'll try to print them out. If um, you brought your topo file to, or your topography today, and you want to give it to me, I'll take it. I don't really want it today <laughs> because I extended the date, but I will take it because I, it was originally due today. Um, it sounds like the bookstore might have cardboard again, so that's good. 
So now you guys can, can finish your cutting. It is due next Wednesday, so a week from today. I just postponed it by a week. Um, unfortunately, that coincides a lot with your assignment 203, which I think is also due next week, right? I'd have to go back and double check. So um, it's not my fault that they're doubling up. I was trying to keep them from doubling up. OK, any global questions? No? All right. 